How's it going? Welcome back to the channel and to another video and it is good for me to be back in front of the camera and filming another magic tutorial for you today because I've had a rough couple of days. I've had a rough couple of days. I've been in and out of hospital, had to have an operation. It wasn't very pleasant but I am okay now. I am recovering and you know what really cheers me up? being in front of the camera filming some magic tutorials. Today, I'm going to be teaching you an incredible mentalism trick that I absolutely love, and it's called Astronaut. To cheer myself up after my hospital ordeal, I have got myself a little pet. It is not a very uh, fluffy or cuddly pet, but it is a cactus, and I have not got a name for this cactus yet. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a competition to name the cactus. All you need to do is comment down below what you think this cactus should be called. The pet. Our pet. The channel's pet. Comment down below what you think the cactus should be called, and not only will the winner obviously name the cactus, but they will also win something, and I will see what I can give away. They will win a sealed deck of cohorts. This is completely sealed, it is also a marked deck I believe, and uh, yeah, it's completely unopened, and so I will be giving this brand new deck of cards to the winner of Name the Cactus. This cactus needs a name, because it's my new friend. Other than that, it is time to get into Astronaut, which is a way of seeing through an envelope. For this trick, it is so important you realise that the card they write on and the envelope are both ungimmicked. There are, you don't need to buy special envelopes, you don't need to buy special cards, and it's also important to note that you can adapt this trick. If you want to use a card box instead of an envelope, or a playing card instead of a blank business card like the one I'm using, then go ahead and feel free. This trick is completely adaptable. You can change this to suit your performing needs. So you're gonna need some blank business cards though if you want to perform it the way I do, and I think it's really powerful the way I do it because they really can write anything. Obviously you're also gonna need a uh, Sharpie, or you know, three Sharpies. Always have backup Sharpies, that is a moral I live my life by. Don't ever let yourself run out of ink at a magic gig. Uh, so yeah, you're going to take a Sharpie, you are going to allow them to write whatever they want, any word they want, on the business card, and then you are going to take it and seal it inside this envelope. In this sort of action, you're going to seal it up and hand it to them straight away. They can hold it like that. There is no way of seeing through this envelope. You can shine a phone torch on it, it is completely see-through. So when getting envelopes and business cards, I would recommend making sure that you actually can't see through it, because if you can, then the trick is pointless and the method is ridiculous, because they can see through it anyway. So make sure to choose some good opaque Brown envelopes tend to be uh, more opaque than the white ones. The white ones tend to be a bit see-through, especially when you're writing in Sharpie. So get some solid opaque envelopes and you will be okay to perform this trick. You are also going to need a gimmick which I used in my Sharp Edge Card Peak tutorial not long ago. So if you watch that tutorial and you now have that gimmick, make sure to get it again because you're going to need it for this video. If you don't, this is how you get one. here is the sharp edge gimmick and the reason it's called the sharp edge gimmick is very very simple because it has a sharp edge it is to remind me that this has a sharp edge and that I should not cut myself on this so be careful if you're using this gimmick get some tape put it around the edges and try not to cut yourself and I once again need to say this for legal reasons 
I can't be held responsible if you cut yourself on this gimmick, okay? It is not my fault. Use it at your own risk. So, you have this mirror, which is essentially taken from a makeup thing. You can chuck the rest of it away, unfortunately. You are going to be using it for better reasons than makeup. <laughs> You're going to be using it for the purposes of magic. So, this mirror is going to allow you to peek what you need from the car, and the cover is actually built into the trick itself because the cover for you peeking this is the envelope. You are going to be hiding this mirror right behind the envelope and just in the act of holding this envelope you are going to be able to peek exactly what you need in clear detail. First of all, positioning the mirror in the hand, that is going to be really really important because you're going to want to load it behind the envelope. But in order to do that, you're going to need to palm it first. So it is, I guess, sort of the same as the uh, the sharp edge uh, peak, uh, you know, way of holding it, the sort of palm we used. Uh, this is a different mirror. I'm using a different mirror to prove that you can do this with different sized mirrors. This one is uh, considerably bigger and also is round all the way around. Uh, there is no flat edge. Some people were saying, I don't have a mirror exactly like that, so I can't do this trick. Uh, that's rubbish. You can do this with any mirror at all. Does not matter if it's big. And just because you have small hands, again, doesn't mean you can't do this. Uh, you can even adapt the mirror yourself if you want to. You can laser cut this, um, again, all at your own risk, but modify your gimmicks uh, to, to suit you. If I was choosing between this and the other one, I would definitely choose the other one. But just to prove that you can do this, even when it's you know feeling a little bit uncomfortable, I'm going to be using the bigger gimmick. Uh, so you're going to hold it like so. And this is going to be um, at the base of the thumb, the sort of pad uh, of your thumb here. Uh, I always call all of this the thumb. I know it's not really, but um, that's sort of the, the palm thumb area. And then you're going to be holding it with the first knuckles of your ring and pinky finger, and that is going to be at your side. And if you're worried about people seeing this, I did a video recently about um, getting away with difficult sleights of hand or difficult methods and what to do if it goes wrong, all that sort of stuff, having the confidence to perform difficult tricks. And if you're worried that people are going to see this, then what I would suggest is taking this mirror out next time you go out with family or friends, having it in this palm and just not doing any magic. You're just going to have it in the palm, you're going to walk around, you're going to talk to people, you're going to be moving objects, you're going to be picking things up, you're going to be putting them down, you're going to be saying hello to our as yet unnamed cactus friend. You're going to be living your life and what you'll find is that if you're doing this correctly and if your body language is correct, so no one is ever going to see this, that's what you really need to remember. If your body language is not focusing on it, if it just becomes another part of your hand and you're not looking at it, or you're not sort of, you know, being awkward with your hands like this, if you're just natural, if you're just casual as you normally would behave, then you're, you're gonna get away with this. No one's ever gonna see it. The way I sometimes like to get into position with the mirror is like so. Uh, so sometimes I have it uh, in this position like this with the actual mirror surface facing outwards and I'm holding it uh, with the envelope over so that the envelope is providing perfect cover for that. And from most angles, you know, even really from behind, that envelope is not going to show anything. Obviously from this angle that's, uh, that's pretty bad, but if you're holding your hand like this, uh, or you know, if you're angled away from your audience, this is very natural. There is nothing uh, wrong about this. I mean even, I can even lift it up, I can even hold the envelope like this. Uh, if you want to be really really cheeky, you can open the envelope and say look, nothing inside. I mean, that's pretty cheeky, that's pretty bold, and you might not feel comfortable doing that. And fair enough, if you, if you, you know, don't feel comfortable doing that, that is, uh, that is pretty bold. But what I'm saying is, no one's going to see this great big mirror here. Now, you can hold it like that, and uh, if you want to load the mirror into the correct position behind the envelope from this position with the mirror surface out, that's sort of a two-hand job. You rotate like this, and now you're holding the mirror, and you can do that. And essentially what I'm doing there is I'm using most of the envelope to hide the mirror, but if I just used the envelope, there would be edges sticking out either side. I don't want that, obviously. That's going to be pretty bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the edges on one side and just use my fingers. And I can very easily get from a palmed position while they're writing down the piece of information on the card 
That is perfect misdirection. You can do whatever you want, especially if you're performing for one spectator. They're angling this away from themselves, uh, away from themselves, away from you, the magician. They're angling it away from you. They're writing down whatever they want. And while you do that, all you simply do is rotate the mirror around and position it. Bit of an awkward action. It is a little bit awkward. There's a sort of rotate. It's a bit weird, okay? And I'm not a huge fan of that way of doing it. What you can do is have the mirror face down. You can have the mirror face down in your palm. Same sort of thing, same sort of deal. The envelope can be either way. Uh, obviously, you get more cover when it's this way. I'll just give you a few angles of that. It, that is a, a way of doing it. But the reason that it's face down is you get this, which is so easy. Just by lowering, I'll do that again, so you're here and the envelope can be either way around. We'll do it this way around this time. Uh, I think it was the other way around last time. I'll do both, it's fine. So you've got the envelope like this, you simply bring them together and you rotate up. Now there are a few flashes there, there are a few flashes of the edge of the mirror. Do you think anyone's going to be looking at me? Putting the envelope into position like this? Of course they're not. And yes, it's upside down so I can just rotate. It's fine, and I can push from finger to finger, I can do whatever I want, it's fine. I will do that one more time with the envelope like this, because I'm not sure I've shown you this way, <laughs> I really can't remember. Um, so the envelope and the mirror meet, and like so. From the back, the way this is happening, with the envelope over the top to provide shade, we've got the dirty glue side of the, uh, the mirror, and that is the one that's facing outwards. The mirror side is down in the palm, same palm position as before. The way this is happening is quite simply the two are coming together and going up. Very, very simple. There's no awkward rotation there. It is, it is a very uh, simple action. So once you've gone from palm position, down, lift, you're now in the perfect position to have this peaked. Now, yes, the envelope is upside down. If you want to um, rotate the envelope, it is a simple case of pushing round and cover with the fingers. And the great thing about this is some people will think their fingers need to be really, really close together. They don't. You can actually move your fingers apart like this, because although this looks like my fingers are very, very spread, in actual fact, it is still providing that cover, it's still providing that shade. So you don't need to have your fingers, you know, death gripping this, uh, this mirror to hide it. You can be quite loose and you can gesture like this, especially in movements, because this is dark and I'm wearing dark, uh, you know, I could even black art this, although I've never done that, I think that's a bit extreme. I could even black art this and have it really camouflaged. But in this action, in this movement, no one's ever going to see the mirror. Obviously you don't move it too much, I'm exaggerating a little bit, um, but essentially you are covered, this is not going to be seen. So now we get to the exciting bit, the peak. You take the card that they have been holding on to and you get ready to peak, and this is how you do that. Once they've written down whatever they want, and in this case they've written down anything, thank you Cactus, you are going to take the card and show it to people. Now, it is really important, first of all, that as they're writing it, you are making sure that they're holding it away from you. You don't want them to write it on the surface. Uh, so you're going to want to you know, make sure that it's lifted up, they're writing it away from you. You take it back and you are showing people one last time, this is what's on the envelope, and you shove it right in. And at that moment, I just peeked the anything. I will show it from your point of view so that you are behind me as the performer. You're showing people, you're showing people, you come back, you come to here, you peek what's on it, and I'll try and angle the mirror so that the lens of the camera, there we go, the lens of the camera can see. Normally this would be like this for me, because that's uh, aiming at my eyes, but if I aim it towards the camera, as if those were my eyes, that's what I'm seeing. And all I need is show, show, glimpse, and in. That is it, it is just a moment, it is just. I'm showing it round, I come behind, I glimpse, and I'm in. And then I push it right down, I seal it up, and as I do, I can put the mirror back there, and I can hand it off. They take the envelope, this hand drops to the side, we're done, that is it. Now I'm gonna go over that because that is, uh, Quite a complicated little few movements that happen there. Using my opposite hands now, I show what is written on the card, I come to here, I peek, I slide in, and this is facing towards them, I can simply hand off the envelope. The mirror isn't seen, 
because of the sleight of hand, the mirror is not seen at all. Uh, I, I even hand it off with the hand that the mirror is, is in at this point. Um, if you're not comfortable doing that, you can transfer, but then I often think that this hand is a bit dirty. So there's a, a theory with the human mind, the way that the human mind works, there's a theory that as soon as something leaves a hand, that that hand is empty. Now this isn't, you know, something that you're consciously aware of, that spectators will be consciously aware of, of course it's not, but it is something that's inbuilt in us in a, a way that we can't help, a biological way, I guess, um, although I'm not sure if it's sort of a deep psychological thing, but it is the, the idea that as soon as something leaves the hand, the hand is empty. That is not true, of course it's not. Now obviously if we're aware that there are two items in the hand and one leaves, we know there's one left. But if we think that one thing has left, we don't even consider, as humans, we don't consider that something might still be in there, even though there could be. Just as a, a psychological point of interest, what's really cool about handing away the envelope with the hand that the mirror is in, is that as soon as they take the envelope back, this hand instantly becomes innocent. There is no pressure on this hand. So, you hand the envelope away, I will uh, hand it off screen, and as soon as that's gone, you put your hand to your side, and you're clean. There is no need to worry about this moment, because as soon as the envelope's left the hand, the hand comes down here, you ditch the mirror in the pocket, very, very simple, and they hold on to the envelope like this. From here, it's all presentation, because you already know what's inside the envelope. Now, you can present this however you want, you can present this as mind reading, or, to justify the envelope, to justify the reason writing it down, you can present this as X-ray vision. So you can call this uh, X-ray, you know, X-ray astronaut. I don't know, <laughs> it's up to you. But um, you, you can present this like you know what's inside the envelope. The only issue I have with that is, this is a mentalism trick, and if you present this like you're seeing through the envelope, for me, it turns it into too much of a physical trick, saying that you're able to see through the envelope because then the envelope is too much in the centre of the frame, the card is too much in the centre of the frame. What I always like is, we'll put it in the envelope so that I can't see it, now you can put this away and I will read your mind to see what was on that card, I will read your mind, it becomes a mental trick, and for me that's so much better than just seeing through an envelope, because that's so physical, that's so in the physical world. So yeah, that's just a, a preference on presentation, but you can change that, you can do whatever you want when it comes to presentation. Uh, it is all up to you. But I hope you enjoyed this, I enjoyed teaching this. This has been Astronaut, and the reason it's called Astronaut is because the first time I performed this trick, the first spectator that I ever did this to wrote down Astronaut, and so uh, the trick then became Astronaut. I said name any word, uh, write it down rather, uh, write down any word, and they wrote down Astronaut, and I thought that's a great word, what a great word, nothing has ever topped that, no, nothing's ever topped that for me, people always come up with boring words, but Astronaut, that's great, so that's the name of the trick, uh, there we go. Make sure to write your comments down below and name the cactus, and you might win a deck of cohorts by Illusionist. Uh, so yeah, there we go, that's the little competition giveaway for today. Okay, so there we have it, that is Astronaut, a mentalism trick, a way of knowing exactly what is written down on a blank business card, inside an envelope, inside your spectator's pocket if you want to, and I'm very happy that I shared it with you today. I'm going to be teaching a lot more mentalism here on YouTube, of course, but also some of the more powerful, deadly secrets will be taught on the $5 Club. So you can go over to patreon.com slash cavernbooth, and for just $5 a month, you can get access to the full 30-part mentalism series teaching a load of propless mentalism, including how to unlock phones, know people's bank card details, and know exactly what their name is, what their star sign is, all of that sort of stuff. You can just walk up to people and read them with no props, they don't write anything down, nothing like that. It is just pure mentalism, and it's some of the best stuff that I perform. So for just $5 a month, you get all of that, plus all of my sleight of hand projects and everything else. So if that sounds like something that you are up for, a lot of you guys have been joining the $5 club and it's great to see. So if you want to do that as well, then you can do, but it's completely up to you.
Make sure to click the thumbs up button down below on this video. That is completely free and it is the best way of helping me out. And you can also subscribe to the channel and join me on my video making journey as I make a lot more magic tutorials and magic related videos here on this channel. So if you're up for that, then you might like my channel and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. I think you're gonna have to be Come with me. Let's go.